Watch this train braking. From your knowledge of physics, you know it has a lot of kinetic energy. In fact, 50% of the energy it uses is lost during braking. Our proposal of regenerative braking with onboard storage captures this energy and decreases the cost of passenger kilometres travelled. In Britain last year, only 13% of journeys were by public transport, a figure which has only risen by 0.8% since the year 2000. The countries at the top of the leaderboard, like Switzerland and Austria, boast more electrified truck and motor trains. Meanwhile, we're being hit by continuous rises in ticket prices and delays sometimes lasting hours. Parliament desires three quarters of rail journeys to be on electrified track by 2020. However, the Department for Transport only has plans to electrify a further 10% over the same period. The UK has already missed the first of its original CO2 targets and is now committed to a 30% reduction by 2027. The rail industry must contribute to this by investing in greener technology. The transport sector accounts for about 21% of greenhouse gas emissions in the UK, so if we can improve the efficiency of transport technologies, then that would give us significant carbon reduction savings. One method of doing this is regenerative braking, where drive motors are run in reverse to generate an electric current. Just over 30% of trains are equipped to harvest braking energy, but currently this power is fed back into the grid. This causes compatibility issues because the electrified network works on different power systems. Moreover, the energy is harvested in a short time. Therefore, there is a huge spike fed through the line which causes sections of the track to trip. To solve these problems, we propose storing the energy on board the train. This is achieved by rectifying the generated current for storage and then inverting it to power the train when it accelerates from the station. We have a few constraints to consider. The storage technology needs to have high power and energy density, as well as being low in mass and volume. So we compared different storage technologies and we found lithium ion capacitors to be the most promising. This graph of power and energy density shows that lithium ion capacitors offer greater power and energy storage for a given mass than other storage technologies. As the animation shows, this enables the system to fit into a relatively small space under a carriage without compromising on passenger capacity. Lithium ion capacitors are effectively a hybrid between a battery and a capacitor. As shown in the diagram, they have carbon anodes pre-doped with lithium ions. This gives the anode a lower electrical potential, allowing more energy to be stored. This technology offers immediate energy savings of up to 37%, which, if applied to the whole UK electric fleet, equates to the power generated by a small wind farm. So we're decreasing CO2 emissions by 140,000 tonnes every year. It's got an immediate sustainability benefit, immediate public reputation enhancement, immediate public benefit, and you've pinned down the long-term financial risk. Yes, we're saving £107 million annually and decreasing the cost of PKT by 6%, which means a six-year payback period for train operating companies and lower ticket fares for all of us. This is an inspired idea which is transferable to other modes and should therefore have a significant impact across a range of modes of transport. The government is spending £9 billion on rail upgrades and scrambling to electrify more track. Meanwhile, our system could be implemented by 2019 and start saving energy immediately. Regenerative braking with onboard storage provides short-term energy savings coupled with long-term financial benefit. Britain has the oldest rail network in the world. Now it's time to make it the best rail network in the world. <laughs>